so hi and welcome back. This is John, and again, I'm here with... Roxy. Christy. Crystalline. And so we're doing, I guess this is our third show together? This is our third show together? It is. Wow. So y'all uh, are now tied with Sam as far as guest on oh, our show. How, yeah, how many shows we've done with uh, the same guest, so... There we go, yeah. Yay. So we're always looking for people to be on the show, so... We are very glad that you guys joined us today. And we are doing a uh, kind of an interesting little mashup of mm-hmm. dice today. But Christy brought a, uh, it's a, it's a novelty die, but it is, it is usable, and I and like it a lot. It's one that every geek, I think, is probably uh, familiar with. Oh, yeah. Um, it is your, your light-up D20. Mm-hmm. Um, there it is. When you crit on a 20, it flashes red. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's just fun. It is oh, yeah. fun. It is, it is but it, it feels... I know you've got some dice trivia for you. I, 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 oh, no, I, no. You usurped your dice trivia slot uh, because I wanted to play with the with the die. Um, <laughs> well, we can start off with this one, definitely, and we'll move on to the others after the trivia. Oh, that's fine. But no, this uh, is... But no, I, I like this a lot. Now, you got this at... I believe it was Think Geek. It's, Think I, Geek? We've had it for several years. Yeah. I got it as part of a stocking stuffer for Sean's Christmas one year. Awesome. Um, so, and it's lasted several years. Very cool. So. Now, have you ever used it in a game? Or is um, it mostly just kind of a... It's mostly just a play. I was yeah. going to say, if it's if you've had it for several years and yeah. it's still... I mean, it's working very very nicely and yes. it lands on that 20 and it, it flashes, flashes for, what, five, mm-hmm. five seconds? It yeah. flashes... And it'll keep flashing as long as it's sitting on it. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so it'll... So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, you see, this, I mean, this kind of reminds me of a story in that, you know, a little bizarre, but there was a game that I was running. It was either the second or third time I ever ran uh, World of Darkness for, uh, for you and Amanda <laughs> out yeah. at the house. And the power was out? And the power was out. Power went out, yeah. And, and uh, you know, you should not have any trouble... Running a role-playing game in the dark, for the most part. You wouldn't think so. You wouldn't think so, but being able to see a dice yep. was the one fallback that we all ran into. Yeah, and I mean, we had candles and we had flashlights mm-hmm. and cell phone lights and all that. Mm-hmm. But the power had been out for quite a while. And actually, that particular time, the power ended up staying out for almost 24 hours. It was, yeah. uh, it was not fun. Yeah. I was very displeased. Um, and so was, so was Amanda, which it was her house. But uh, yeah, we had dice that when the lights are up and you and there's good lighting, you could see no problem. Trying to shine a candle on it, yeah, that was miserable. Because waxy, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, we actually had a bunch of tea lights because Amanda wasn't. We didn't have like survival candles or anything like that so we just had a bunch of votives and tea lights on a cookie tray <laughs> we're like oh sitting it on the table so we could move it around we had some that we could hold up but you know that's what we used our cell phone lights for but i think her phone was almost dead john's phone was almost yeah. dead and oh it was just it was miserable he'd already been to the store to buy a flashlight that could be recharged in the car yeah and uh gotten us some snacks because it was it, we, we couldn't cook want... We couldn't cook and didn't want to open the refrigerator to let out any of the cold air. Yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, that was a nice, it's a nice, it's, it's a nice memory to have. I wouldn't want to live it again. No, but at the same time, it's one of those things where could somebody please design dice that give us something to see or, you know, game implements that we can use in the dark, in, in the, the dark. dark or in very low light. Exactly. Because like I said, in the situation we were in, all of our acrylic dye, it just, it glared so bad with the candlelight. You just couldn't, you really had to, you know, and all of our, or all of us wear, John doesn't wear glasses, but Amanda and I both have miserable <laughs> eyesight without our glasses on, and we're trying to read these horrible numbers. It was, it was a mess. So a light up, which granted, World of Darkness doesn't use D20s, but this is a nice big bold die that would have been very useful as well as the sets that we'll get to after you do your dice trivia. Oh yeah, we do have dice trivia, and uh, I've got a, two that I can choose from here. So I'll, I'll probably give you all Just drop the drop a dice truth bomb on us. Uh, do you guys want? Uh, let's go with either another fun fact from Egypt or a fun fact from Rome. We have two new ones. What do y'all want to go I'm with? Go Rome. 
I'd Let's go Rome. I think we've done, Rome? we've done more Egyptian uh, trivia. Yeah, it's kind and of interesting. Egypt came up in some of our other episodes. I think it's because, you know, writing, the, the availability of it at the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a pretty ancient well, civilization. And, yeah. It's kind of hard to go back before that and really, you know, find yeah. stories. But, so we'll go ahead and uh, talk about General Julius Caesar. And that he led his army across the Rubicon to attack Rome in 49 BC. Hmm. So, which set in uh, motion the, his rise to power. And so he knew when he was, there was a point of no turning back. You know, of course, every, ever since then, people have always, you know, said, you know, crossing the lexicon or whatever. Rubicon. Rubicon, yeah. <laughs> crossing the Rubicon, thank you. Yeah, c- crossing the word, you know. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> Uh, but crossing the Rubicon has become kind of a phrase for when things go too far. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that he said himself as he did it is Lea Iacta Est. The translation for this is the die is cast. Oh, oh very yeah. nice. And so, yeah, there, there's a little bit of dice trivia for you. Yeah, very cool. Isn't that crazy how much it comes up? That is a little Just, weird. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try to uncover these dice here, and hopefully they've been able to charge enough. Mm-hmm. I'll go ahead oh, and I'll flip some lights up. for us. Yeah, turn off the lights. Turn out the lights. There we go. Yeah. So here with our light up die, we have yeah. Some of them didn't get hit by the light as much. There we go. Um, but we have glow in the dark die. I have two sets of glow-in-the-dark die. Um, well, I have more, but these are the two that I'm, I have for this episode. One of them is by one of the same makers. The uh, solid color die, which are blue when the lights are on, but when it goes out, it's just a typical glow-in-the-dark green, you know. Um, were by, I believe, Metal... Metal Dice, yes. Metal, Metal Dice Gaming, yeah. I think is the name of the company, MDG. Uh, we have... I believe discussed their dice before. We've talked. But I can't about remember it. or not if we have or not. I don't know. We've I'm talked of, about them, uh, or we, we kind of talked about like uh, how we kind of prefer uh, Metal Dice, the company, to some of the plated dice by Chessex. That's yeah. That's probably what we've said. Then the other set I have is a Chessex dice. I don't have the name of it, but I can find it. But it is. An orange set. It looks orange and kind of yellowy and clear when the lights are on. But when the lights are off, the clear parts glow. And you can still... But it's like swirls of glow in the dark. Mm-hmm. So they're very... They're probably my favorite of the yeah. two. Just because of the variance in the in the, the color and the look. But... Um, so you prefer the, ch- the chest sex between those two. Now that I'm aware the, of the the glow in the dark, I like I, said, I like the the variations in the color, because it's not just a solid. I would like the metal dice ones because uh, when we bought these, we bought these at Gen Con. That's fine, John. Mm-hmm. We bought these at Gen Con. I bought a, a a bright blue set. I also bought a white set, and I bought a mini glow in the dark set uh, that was glow in the dark that was purple. And they all glow the same color. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so that's, that's my one drawback, which I understand glow in the dark. There's not a whole lot of options with making mm-hmm. the, what color it glows to. But I'm pretty sure that I've seen orange glow in the dark things. And I've seen, uh, yeah, get a picture of that, John. Uh, okay. Orange glow in the dark things, re- you know, uh, yellow glow in the dark things. It's not just all that, that standard glow in the dark stick on star green that that we get from the metal metal dice com- uh, game company but yeah there it was a nice i was glad i picked them up i actually picked them up not aware that they glue in the dark or gl- glue glued glowed glowed in the dark uh i thought they were just because they almost look like the vapor dice that we looked at last yeah. time mm-hmm. by cracking yeah. dice they do. um but just with the orange and maybe a little yellow, and I, that's all I thought it was. And then the guy that owned the shop was like, oh, they glow in the dark. So I was like, eee! Now, I do have to say, just kind of going back to your having to play in the dark mm-hmm. scenario, the solid color ones much look better. like they would be easier to read in that kind yeah. of situation. Mm-hmm. Very, very much so. The black numbers help, help 
help with that because when they glow in the dark, you can easily see exactly. that there are numbers on them. With yeah. the other ones, the numbers are white, so they're harder to see. Exactly, and they're that that is functionality wise. The Chessex swirly glow in the dark ones are not functional um, for a gaming in low light with the glowing, you know, and using the glowing as an actual. And I know again, glow in the dark, oh, glow in the dark dice are more novelty. You're not going to find yourself in a situation where you're going to need glow-in-the-dark dice. And they are going to fade, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. probably yeah. before your eight-and-a-half-hour game session is over like <laughs> ours <laughs> tend to be. But um, the the uh, MGD or the MDG, I guess it's MDG. MGD is beer, isn't it? Miller, Jr. and Drake. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, metal, the metal dice gaming die dice are definitely easier to read. And so we would... In fact, I gave a set to Levi. So if that yeah. ever happens out there again, we have... At least two sets to to use. And I could see, you know, for a novelty game session, as a GM, I, I like to use various lights. Uh, I like to do different environments. These would be cool under a black light because yeah. you know they would light up oh, yeah. uh, very nicely. And so that is what I could see doing with those. Yeah. So anyway, that's our show for this week. I've got a dog that is going nuts under the table and keeps bumping it. So we're going to... We're going to go ahead and cut it before all you hear is him thumping the table. <laughs> but thank you guys for joining us. And, uh, and remember, show me your dice and I'll show you mine. <laughs> See ya. You've been listening to Dice Foyers. Please subscribe to get our episodes as soon as they release. For more information about us, check out PassionNerdly.com, at PassionNerdly on Twitter and Instagram, as well as Facebook.com slash PassionNerdly. Also, if you're interested in supporting our show, look us up at patreon.com slash passionnerdly. Once again, thank you for listening. This has been a production of the Southgate Media Group. For more podcasts like this one, head over to southgatemediagroup.com.